I'm Mindy Tuzani. I'm a certified nutrition coach and yoga teacher. And I'm here in the beautiful Santa Barbara, California. And I'm here with the gorgeous and talented Layla Tavakolian. How did you get into this world of nutrition and functional medicine? Um, so a little bit about me. I'm a nutritional consultant. I work specifically with physicians, training them on how to change their patients' lives and try to move them away from pharmaceuticals and utilizing more natural alternatives to um, their current therapies. And, uh, you know, I'm a lifestyle educator. So how do we change the things that we're doing on a daily basis, going to the root of our habits and implementing things that will impact us on a grander level. So, you know, going internally, working through the small things, and then, you know, laying the foundation for it, reflecting out into the world of everything that we do. Mm -hmm. So it's not just supplementing, it's really just laying a foundation when you do supplement. It's just those minor tweaks that you're making instead of having to be on something for the rest of your life, you know. Mm -hmm. My background, I grew up in a very, very, um, alternatively minded household. My parents are natives of Iran and they moved here in um, the late 70s. And in Iran, you know, there's a lot of like markets and like stands at the corners where you go and get your vegetables every morning and go get your fruit. And there's like um, bakeries where you go get fresh loaves of bread that have been made in uh, these wood fire pits and uh, everything's made fresh. And it, it's such a community element of eating mm -hmm. and bringing like the family together and the house is just smelling of like this delicious cooking and these herbs and these you know sauteed greens that have been just simmering for hours and one thing is you know always going to the freshest source so like we weren't allowed to have cereal growing up as crazy as that sounds you know my mom would always say you know this is it's processed it's been made in a factory and uh, looking back, I feel really fortunate that I had uh, parents that really implemented like natural and healthy living from, from a foundational level, and it was just normal for them. And uh, growing up, you know, me and my brother, all we ever wanted was to take a sack lunch to school that had like a peanut butter jelly sandwich in it because we just wanted to fit in instead of having these like Pyrex dishes filled with rice and stews and they were all weird colors and the kids didn't know what we were doing and why we were eating what we did. Mm -hmm. um, but looking back, it's like, wow, we were so lucky, right? <laughs> all those times like we were kicking and screaming and pouty about it. It's like, oh, I wish I had that now. So my trajectory, you know, was to go to medical school and pursue my dream of like being in the health industry and in the medical field. And I realized around my senior year in college that that just wasn't the path for me at that time. I wasn't happy. I took the MCAT and I was like, is this really for me right now? Do I have the motivation to get me through to where I'm going? I want to take a year off and uh, maybe even evaluate something like PA, chiropractic, DO, something that was more to the resonance of my energy being, my spiritual body that um, I didn't feel like I was getting that, that exploration, um, just being a student, that was how I identified myself. I'm a student. Um, I hadn't really traveled the world. I hadn't seen much. I felt guilty if I wasn't in the library. And, um, you know, as life has it, it led me down the path of getting into the nutritional education world and working with doctors and teaching them um, the fundamentals of the biochemistry with nutrition and the body and um, things we can do on daily basis and habits and how stress affects us, how guilt affects us. So I, I was led to Austin, Texas, where a company by the name of Premier Research Labs brought me on as a uh, physician educator for the Midwest and the Southeast. So I got to work with a lot of um, different types of practitioners, a lot of energy medicine, um, a lot of chiropractors, um, MDs. And it's led me down the path of actually joining an organization by the name of Orthomolecular. And Orthomolecular is a nutrition and education company and truly at, at the forefront of transforming the um, practice of medicine currently. We know the healthcare model is a very broken model. Mm -hmm. And uh, the system is really kind of really making health about symptoms and how to treat the disease instead of manage the health and uh, providing practitioners tools on how they can liberate themselves not only from the model that's broken but from 
uh, standpoint where you're not just treating symptoms, you're going to the root and going to that functional element of what we can do foundationally. Mm-hmm. So just a little bit of background. That's beautiful. Thank <laughs> you so much for sharing. Um, and yeah, just a little tidbit on the you know functional medicine versus conventional medicine. Conventional medicine is more where practitioners are trained um, to prescribe. Mm-hmm. And like where obviously that has a time and a place, uh, what we're finding is that that's just happening all the time. And, you know, so the reason we want to have this tidal wave of change is because, you know, for us personally, and we know of a lot of other people out there that are just sick of like taking a pill for an ill and it's kind of like a band aid. And then you put another Band-Aid on top of that Band-Aid and another Band-Aid on top of that Band-Aid. And then you have, like, all of these other side effects. Um, So what's different about functional medicine is it's, like, you know, you might need a prescription for something, but that's more of, like, a last resort or a short-term usage. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you try to, like, peel back all of the layers and get to that root cause and start changing some of your daily habits some of your symptoms can just start fading away. And that was my personal experience and that's what I've seen. So that's why I'm so passionate about sharing all of this with you because it can be as easy as making simple daily mm-hmm. changes. And so, like you said, you are so blessed to have your mom that was like, I'm not giving you that process stuff. Mm-hmm. We are gonna new, we are gonna give you all of this uh, nutrition mm-hmm. and all of these things, this fuel that your body needs so you can stay strong, even though you're like, no mom, yep. <laughs> I, I, wanna, I wanna be like the other kids, yep. give me the PB&J yep. sandwich and <laughs> cut the crust off and give me the, give me the package stuff. Yeah, that seems more fun, right? And yeah. It's like- yeah. yeah. So when your kids are begging for the PB and J, don't give in because <laughs> eventually they'll totally be grateful and come back and thank you. I agree with that. <laughs> I agree with that. Um, and then another thing I wanted to ask you, you know, because like you were blessed, you had more of a holistic um, approach growing up, and then you were going to be a traditional doctor mm-hmm. and went to medical school. Um, so did you have anything that came up for you personally where? you did seek conventional medicine and it, you tried it and it kind of let you down and then that brought you back to this path. Sure, yeah, that's a good question. Um, Yeah, with my desire to go to med school, I mean, there was definitely an element of appreciating what these doctors do and what Western medicine does provide, right? I think, you know, for temporary or for that necessary illness, like there is, it's time and place. And for example, what surgeons do, there is just absolutely necessary. I'm not like wanting to, yeah. you know, discredit the, the work that's done for these physicians to go down the pass and the, the elements that it holds. But yeah, growing up, um, you know, genetically, I'm somewhat prone to sinus infections and ear infections. So as a kid, I had constant ear and sinus infections. And I probably had strep throat four or five times a year to mm-hmm. the point that it was like, they almost considered getting our tonsils removed. And they really? were like, yeah, well, you're just one time shy a year of getting it done. But I remember being sick and like very sick, like every two months. And looking back, what probably was stimulating that was that I was dairy sensitive and I didn't realize it till adulthood, till like mm-hmm. several years ago that dairy flares me up. And it, I, I, and you know, it's funny. It's like a lot of people have these symptoms, but they just never acknowledge that that's not normal. I didn't, know that it wasn't normal, that I wasn't like constantly having a runny nose or coughing or feeling uh, mucusy after I had some form of dairy or yogurt until I removed it. And then I was like, that's not supposed to happen, right? Uh, I'm not supposed to cough every time yeah. I have some sort of dairy. Mm-hmm. And so because of that, as a kid, I had chronic sinus and ear infections. And so the, the traditional thing was like, go to the pediatrician and get some antibiotics, get some steroids for your strep throat and that was continuous and um, it served its purpose definitely and then when I came into kind of being on my own I worked for a uh, pediatric pulmonologist right out of school kind of during my transition into the more alternative worlds and you know what it comes down to at that point I was living on my own and I was definitely responsible for feeding myself and being in that doctor's office we had catered lunches every single day from the pharma reps and they would bring us desserts and snacks and cookies and smoothies and 
um, you know, the lunches were just anything you can imagine. And I saw myself sink into that eating habit and um, just how unhealthy and unhappy I was. And, um, you know, for me, noticing eventually that, like, I think it's because of what I'm putting in my body and uh, my food's changed. So what are the common denominators of, like, these things that I'm experiencing? And it really came back to food. Um, and that was a transition point for me, which led me down to uh, where I am now. And, like, really kind of my move to Austin was, like, activating that. And being in an environment also, being in any environment stimulates how you uh, how you live your life. You know, I think there's a great quote. It's uh, in regards to the people you surround yourself with. But like the, the five people you surround yourself with are a reflection of you. And you eventually like hybridize and your vibrations will synchronize. I think environment's very important too. If you put me in an environment where I'm a, in constant like uh, fluorescent lights and I'm eating crappy food, I'm eventually going to become stagnant to that level. Uh -huh. Put me in an environment where I have the beach and like Austin and people are riding their bikes and running. I'm going to hybridize to that as well. So I think it's important to change your environment mm -hmm. um, when you notice that you're just not where you want to be. Mm -hmm. That's a good starting point and that's easy. That makes sense. So yeah, I love that you shared your story of how like you were a child, you used to have all of these sinus infections and strep throat and so the solution for that obviously was pediatrician and antibiotics um, and that that's you know it, it'll help take care of it for a little while but then it kept coming back and mm -hmm. coming back and you're like okay like I don't want to be on antibiotics forever True. and that has a really um, long-lasting effect by taking the antibiotics it can it can really uh, damage your immune system yep so eventually what you uncovered was you're like, okay, let's try removing dairy, like milk products and, and all of that. And so when you removed that, you realized you were feeling better. You didn't have the tickle in your throat, mm -hmm. all of that mucus, all of the congestion and the ear itches, you said. Yep. So you removed that and then you tried it again and you're like, oh my gosh, that came back. Yep, here it that is. That came back. So that's, that was like the inflammatory trigger and so you removed that. So now how long has it been since you've had like any sinus stuff? Yeah, so I fully 100% gave up dairy four years ago, mm -hmm. um, dairy and gluten. And I have not had a single ear infection since then. That's amazing. Yeah. That's pretty powerful. And, you know, in, in an array of symptoms, you know, we can get into even the gluten element where I finally gave up gluten 100%. And I think, you know, the biggest takeaway message is Try an elimination diet. See what might actually be out of uh, balance for you, right? Because, like, if your body's been giving you that signal for so long and you've just turned an ear and been like, oh, no, that's normal. It's normal that I cough after this. Eventually, you stop listening to the signals. And then when you do an elimination diet, it's actually, like, creating communication with your body again and saying, oh, what are you trying to tell me? Let me listen differently. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a really positive way to do it. And, you know, headaches went away when I stopped gluten, for example. My joint and my body aches shifted. I used to have ah, chronic knee pain. Really? Yeah. And it's uh, and as soon as I have it now, I'll notice, ah, there it is. My, my, my knees are achy. My uh, wrists are a little achy. So... I think, uh, you know, that you can spend the money on an allergy test, but you can also do something as simple as just trying it. Try it for a week. Try mm -hmm. it for two weeks. Try it for three days. And, uh, you know, it's it's hard to give up things that you love, but it's also hard to do something over and over again and get the same results and say, I'm just going to keep ignoring you. So, totally. yeah. I absolutely agree with that. So, yeah, what Leigh was talking about, what she did personally was – doing a elimination diet, just removing dairy and gluten from her diet for a couple of weeks to notice those changes and the symptoms that went away. Um, so what you could do is, you know, just eliminate some of those top triggers from your from your diet and see see what happens. So I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. Absolutely. And then so you work with hundreds of doctors and pharmacists um, and health experts that are in functional medicine and holistic healing. Um, do you have a couple really amazing, like the most miraculous patient stories that you can connect where, you know, a patient had this symptom and 
they did this uh, nutraceutical or mm-hmm. this protocol and, and had a, a miraculous victory. Absolutely. So, I mean, the list is there. It's endless. There is so much testimonial as to the impact it's had on people's lives. But there's a couple that really stand out to me. Um, there was a practitioner that was working with a patient that had severe um, IBS, um, inflammatory bowel syndrome and irritable bowel syndrome, which, of course, it's due to inflammation. And this individual, I mean, their life was essentially paralyzed by the fact that, like, they couldn't really break down any of this food, and they were constantly running to the restroom. And, um, you know, that I can't even imagine that way of life where you're constantly worried about, like, you know, how you're, you're, you're paralyzed. And uh, yeah. they got on a two-week protocol, two weeks of doing high dose probiotics, um, anti-inflammatory nutrients, Mm -hmm. um, things to help heal the gut lining and adding like a digestive enzyme to their, Mm. uh, their, their regimen where it was like facilitating and helping the body break down the nutrients a little bit more effectively. Yeah. And within two weeks, they were having regular bowel movements. Mm. Um, two weeks, two weeks. And you know, that just creates so much freedom in someone's life outside of making them feel better. Mm-hmm. It liberates you yeah. from being tied to something. You're not chained to a bathroom. Exactly. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So that one really hit home for me because I kind of imagined what that would be like. And as a kid, you know, with one of the symptoms with dairy, it's like I was constantly in the bathroom and really? I, yeah, it was just my body could not handle a lot of this stuff. And I mm-hmm. just remember always being worried like oh I can't spend the night at a friend's house or you know just the embarrassment of like having to go to the bathroom constantly Mm. so uh, that hit home and then recently um, which was exciting this is a personal story with a friend's father there's a raw ingredient by the name of bergamot and there's so much amazing research around um, the utilization of this product and it's bergamot is a citrus fruit that comes uh, exclusively from Italy. And in Italy, instead of having orange juice for breakfast, they drink bergamot juice. Ah. And it's kind of like the hybrid between a citrus plant and it's like a lime and an orange had a baby. (laughs) Yeah. And in Italy, they're actually one of the areas that's known as a blue zone. And blue zones are known for having sentient beings. There are a high population of those where there's a lot of people that live over 100. And granted, they live a pretty, uh, you know, a, a balanced lifestyle. They maintain their stress levels, unlike us Americans. And, you know, they take naps and they uh, take long vacations and they enjoy their meals. And it's like a slower way of life. And they they stick to a Mediterranean diet. That That's probably one of it. But bergamot has been found uh, to, in research, to help reduce cholesterol and triglycerides in a very short period of time. So bergamot is really taking the place of how statins work. And so what happens a lot of times when people have been on statins for a very long time, it's shutting off CoQ10 production. Mm. So that's like a very common depletion that takes place Mm. with statins and uh, hormone reduction. And our body needs cholesterol. It's a precursor to the production of our hormones. Yes, so glad you said that. I was gonna ask you. Yeah, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if you look at the way that like biochemically, it's like conversion of cholesterol all the way down into two elements, cortisol, which is utilized in stress reactions. It's like survival hormone or our our sex hormones, Mm -hmm. testosterone, estrogen. So you shut off cholesterol up here guess what? You're going to have a lot less of this breakdown over here. And the feedback, within a month, my friend's father had reduced his triglycerides by 45 points in a Mm. month. It's really fast. It's really was, fast. Did he also change his diet or was just this? Nothing else changed. It was just that. So yeah. yeah, that was the that was the key. That was the key solution. element. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I think there's a place for supplementation um, because they have so much power in the body to really just kind of adjust these pathways and what they're actually producing. So yeah, that, those two are amazing. And then I think, you know, personally just adding in a product that had really high antioxidants um, for me and activated my mitochondria again was a game changer. Like these last three years and, you know, maybe a topic we can get into another time is stress. 
-hmm. But stress uh, really debilitated me in some crazy ways. Um, and, you know, bringing my health back through activating my mitochondria has been really critical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you mentioned uh, one patient story was um, IBS. Mm -hmm. And the keys for that um, woman, right? Uh -huh was uh, removing the dietary triggers that caused inflammation in the gut and then utilizing a digestive enzyme mm -hmm. to help her break down all of that stuff so she could actually absorb the nutrients from food to heal. The other one was probiotics. Yep. Because then that gives our gut, it replenishes all of the good bacteria to fight off the bad bacteria. Yep. Um, and then you said a gut healing uh, supplement, which glutamine. Absolutely. Is that what you were? That's exactly yeah, it. That's what they, so yeah, it's just a, a basic amino acid, which is a protein, a building block for our body, uh, for all of our tissues and our muscles. So this glutamine powder is something that is my personal favorite and has helped a lot. And that's what this patient did basically to reverse her symptoms of IBS. So she would no longer have to worry about, I can't go anywhere because I have to be within so many feet of a bathroom. Mm -hmm. So by doing those simple things, it might seem overwhelming at first, but making those simple steps and having some of those tools to boost healing faster, she was able to get her life back mm -hmm. and not have to worry about going to the bathroom all the time, which it's pretty life changing. Mm -hmm. And then the second story, which is your friend's father who was having some cardio cardiovascular uh, issues and mm -hmm. some really high scores by implementing this simple study or this, this simple supplement that has been studied to lower triglycerides. Mm -hmm. It's a, a lemon lime orange combination. Love child. Fruit. Love child. <laughs> Just having that like mighty antioxidant supplement for a month lowered his scores by 45 points. Yes. And he didn't even change his diet, which if he probably would have changed his diet too, it probably would have dropped even more. Mm -hmm. But it's just so amazing at how some of those simple things, like, you know, like we're saying, you know, you have food and supplements. There's so many tools that you can implement to um, make some changes in your life. Um, and then the third one you mentioned was kind of a little bit more of your personal story. Mm -hmm we're stressed like we're a society that just is like oh I'm stressed I'm stressed I'm stressed I'm so busy 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 I have to do this and that and you kind of found yourself in that because you're you know going to med school and then working for this company and just always doing something yep. and you're like oh I see this in myself and I see this in patients where stress like besides food stress is another trigger mm -hmm. where your body senses it and it can deplete some things so uh, I know we were talking earlier and you mentioned there's a few protocols to help mm -hmm. adrenal supports and to help our stress symptoms um, go away. Could you talk about some of those products and those activities that you helped to heal? Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, like she mentioned, stress is a another key element of like things that might offset the body in a lot of different ways. and. You know, the way that we've been physiologically programmed, that, that, that we've been created, it's a system where we have this activation of the fight or flight, right? That's known as the sympathetic nervous system. It's, uh, if you came across a bear, your body would activate this response for you to like outrun that bear as fast as possible. They actually don't say don't outrun a bear, like <laughs> try to make yourself as big as possible and you know, or if you can climb a tree or something, I don't know. <laughs> Someone should tell me how to out, like if I came across a bear. But anyways, going yeah. back to this example, it's a cascade. So like when you have a stressor, whether it's a perceived stressor or an actual stress, your body sends a signal from the hypothalamus in the brain to another signal at the pituitary, right? And the pituitary is here, right? And then that signal is sent to our adrenals and our adrenals sit on top of our kidneys, adrenal, on top of the kidney. Mm -hmm. And once that signal has been sent to the adrenal glands, we activate something called cortisol. And cortisol is like our fight or flight hormone. It's our survival hormone. Cortisol activates the liver to produce or normalize the blood sugar so we can 
get out of there as fast as possible. It also helps with inflammation and activating uh, and balancing out fats and proteins in the body. So for example, we know that our body utilizes energy, uh, sugar is energy. So we're activating everything we can and getting all the sugar we can to get out of there as fast as possible. Now, if this signal has been going on continuously, instead of giving it long periods of recovery that our body actually needs, we need long durations of parasympathetic to balance out these activations of the sympathetic. Well, with our current lifestyles, you know, we are constantly in this fight or flight reaction. We never rest. And eventually that system's going to become overstimulated and then dampened because imagine if you have a light and you're like flicking it on, 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 eventually you're going to burn out that light. And eventually your body doesn't make enough cortisol anymore. We just don't have that capability. So some of the things that help with stress management, breathing, <laughs> you know, it's like one of the most simple things you can do. It is an automatic parasympathetic response. So big deep breath in, and then release. And when you take that breath in, you expand the lungs, you take in that breath, expand the belly, and when you release, you let go of everything and just bring out those toxins. And you can do this three breaths, five breaths, but just immediate response of the parasympathetic system to balance out that sympathetic nervous system. Um, there's nutrients you can take. There's things known as adaptogens. And depending on where you are, if you're making too much cortisol or not enough, you would take different herbs. Um, B vitamins. B vitamins are critical. They're essential cofactors in that entire cascade of uh, the stress response. Um, Inflammation is another big one as far as what is activating your body to be stressed out all the time. You're getting constant signals inside that say, something's not right. Something's not right. I'm in survival. Or managing your blood sugar that's so important that is probably the primary cause that most people have an overactivation of their stress response because what happens is you'll eat a high carb meal your glucose spikes your insulin spikes to make up for it and then once you start breaking down that sugar your body actually goes below the basal requirements as what it needs for sugar right and when you go below that when you dip your body's like oh shoot i'm in survival I need something, what am I gonna do for energy? And then you activate cortisol. So when you can normalize your blood sugar, whether it be dietary, more complex carbs, getting into a ketogenic state where you use fat instead of uh, sugar for energy, or um, maybe even increasing your fiber intake, slowing down the breakdown of sugar. And there's nutrients and herbs you can take to help with some of the broken um, sugar management systems in the body so mm -hmm. those are just a few things but i think breathing is fundamental and yeah. uh you know changing your lifestyle self-care is really important take the time to get on the beach or go for a walk or get a massage or sit in the bathtub those are all great ways to start balancing out uh our daily lives you know mm -hmm. we live busy busy lives yeah i love that and yeah, with the whole stress thing, another thing, um, your brain, your amygdala, it doesn't know the difference between real and perceived stress. Exactly. So I was smiling because I was like, oh, I was told this before. But yeah, I use uh, being chased by a lion. If you're, a lion is chasing you down the road, that is real stress. But perceived stress is like having a tight deadline, your boss being on your ass about something, mm -hmm. and that gets you all hyped up. And then your cortisol spikes, and then inflammation rises and then you usually have more bad cravings for mm -hmm. either sugar or or bad quality fats or carbs and things like that and then it's like getting you stuck in this circle and I've definitely been there and it was before I knew all of this and so if I would just not eat because uh, I was too busy to eat then I would have that response where blood sugar dips and then it's like, oh my gosh, like I'm shaky, I'm dizzy, mm -hmm. I'm nauseous, I'm hangry, the get out of my way, <laughs> I need food. And so then in that state, I would always make the worst decisions mm -hmm. where I'm like, I need sugar, I want a Snickers, I want uh, cheese yeah, or, or carbs, pizza or yeah. something like that. And then it was like just setting me up for further failures because then it was creating more inflammation, making me fat on the inside, even though I, I might not have looked fat on the inside, it was like skinny fat and that was mm -hmm. causing more inflammation and more symptoms and more pain. So yeah, I love how you said 
you know, about that. And it's, it can be as simple as taking a breath to help calm down that uh, nervous system response. Mm -hmm. Also eating fiber Mm -hmm. to slow down and balance your blood sugar. So you feel like a normal person instead of a a hyped up jittery like fiend (laughs) and eating some fats because when your body uh, uses fats for fuel, it will actually help you when you eat the right type of fats. Let me clarify that like avocados, um, nuts, seeds, nuts, seeds, MCT oil, all of those things that will help you burn fats, your body burn fats and you'll just feel more satisfied. So instead of, you know, being always addicted to food and always worried about what you're going to eat, then you can kind of take back your life and be like, Oh, I'm, I'm good. I can do this. I ate something healthy and Mm -hmm. I'm good. Um, so yeah, I love that. The taking a breath, the foods. So what would you say out of all of the things that you do? I know you Mm -hmm. do a lot of things. We're both, uh, we both love to nerd out and and have, have a lot of things. Like, if you can only pick three things, the most powerful things that you do uh, to live a victory life, what are those mm, things, those that's top a really tips? good question. The top three things. I think first thing is clear the body of any resistances that are pulling you downwards. And the biggest thing for me was, like, identifying and continuously identifying by peeling back the layers one by one of what's triggering me internally Mm -hmm. and not from emotional standpoint because that's next right if we're just talking about like from a dietary standpoint removing as much inflammation in my body as possible because the more my body's working to balance this out all this inflammation then that's actually preventing my energy from expanding outwards and it's also preventing this flow of energy through me because I'm so just pulled inwards Mm -hmm. make the steps to communicate with your body you know figure that out start speaking to it speak to it lovingly and the messages you give yourself are how your external world is also going to react to you so a really beautiful mentor of mine dr angela lutgerhand she she mentioned something that stuck with me and she said would you be best friends with your inner voice and that is so true So we nourish ourselves with the messages we give ourselves as well. It's not just food. So my my number one would be nourishment internally, externally, um, and also how you talk to yourself. That's really important. Mm -hmm. And I I choose to send positive messages my way and like self-love and seeing the beauty and being grateful and appreciative. Um, Appreciation comes in many forms, but the main way is uh, loving myself and giving myself the best, Yeah, making that choice. Totally. Uh, Number two, um, moving through resistance, uh, stand in your discomfort and move towards it because it has a strong message to share with you as to why you don't want to approach something. So show up for yourself. Mm -hmm. Do the things that you don't want to do sometimes because they're what you need the most. Yeah. Um, So that's been kind of my mantra for this year. Show up for yourself. Listen to that resistance and move into it anyway. Okay. And uh, third would be create a community and environment of high energy around you. So surround yourself with people that um, are amplifying you. And we are a reflection of the people that we're surrounded with. Whether you like it or not, you know, you are embodying their energy. So, you know, choose your environments wisely. It affects you. Life is short. Um, enjoy your time here. I love that. Those are so beautiful. Thank well, you. Thank you so much for sharing all of your wisdom and all of your beautifulness with us. That's a new word, beautifulness. <laughs> Thanks. And uh, so I'll put a link in the show notes. So if you would like to connect with Layla, uh, mm-hmm. you'll be able to find her. So thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye. See you later. Bye.